Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, so, uh, as was introduced, my name is Adam Smith, and I head up uh, media strategy at Dunhumby. Um, I know in the program I'm billed as Dylan Slaney, so uh, uh, I'd like to do a deal. If you like the next 15 minutes, it's my presentation. If you don't, then it's obviously uh, Dylan's. Um, and today I'd like to talk uh, um, a bit about how, um, how we feel the media planning industry has reached a tipping point um, and due to connected data and how it's going to lead to uh, a new era around behavioural planning. So we discuss a simple approach that uh, we at Dunhumby follow, uh, a couple of case studies thrown in, and uh, I promise to keep it simple. And in fact, for those of you who actually know Dunhumby, this will probably be the first presentation in about 25 years that is virtually all pictures. Um, so by way of uh, formal introduction, uh, who we are, like I said, we're 25 years old. Um, we're now actually in, um, we have offices in actually 29 uh, countries and we manage data, customer data in 75 markets on behalf of a, a wide range of, of, re, of retailers. Um, and our kind of latest news, as you may or may not know, is uh, that we acquired Sociomantic, uh, the programmatic display platform. So um, let's start right at the beginning. Uh, bear with me. Um, today, the media world works within an, uh, uh, um, a framework of pay, don't earn. And it's an everything framework, and, and it works. You know, it covers content, creative, media, um, social, word of mouth, um, you know, and it's great. But of course, the problem, uh, as you don't need me to tell you, is that it doesn't actually reflect consumer reality. You hardly go to the shops on a Saturday morning and uh, say to your partner, Oh my, what a wonderful brand experience I've just had. I cannot wait for the retail engagement part of this uh, amazing consumer journey I'm on. Um, the serious point, though, is around thinking. Because unfortunately, due to the, um, the media metrics and the measurement that we have in place, um, media planners, of which, uh, and comms planners, which is my background at various agencies, are almost institutionally conditioned to think in these silos, um, and particularly in more traditional sectors such as, such as FMCG. Uh, and quite frankly, our point is that this is not really acceptable anymore. Um, so, let's just imagine for one moment if we really could directly connect uh, what individual consumers see and hear directly with what they feel and think uh, and uh, what they do. Um, I'm going to put on the screen just a couple of, uh, of the benefits, of the media and advertising benefits that it could bring. Uh, and I wish there was uh, more time to talk about them uh, now. I'm happy to take it offline over, over a drink, maybe. Um, however, the key point is that um, this connected world does, doesn't purely lead to a machine-driven uh, pro programmatic nirvana of media efficiency alone. Um, it, what it does is provides much more human tangible benefits. Um, we can understand so much more about the human condition by connecting these data sets up that can not only influence media strategy, but communication strategy, creative strategy, and then ultimately business strategy. And there are other benefits too. Um, yes, you'd have more, sm uh, more relevant, smarter, more personalised communication. Uh, which would lead to much improved media efficiencies, but more importantly, um, for consumers, is you offer a better customer experience. And we all know that if you offer a better customer ex experience, uh, you create loyalty. And if, if you're creating loyalty, you're creating long-term sustainable business growth. Um, and if we can treat customers in the digital space as people and genuinely try to make their lives easier and simpler, rather than chase them aimlessly around the web, then just maybe brands can start to build reassurance and trust, which is the greatest commodity of all, um, particularly in this bewildering digital age. OK, so, so what's the catalyst? What's the game changer going to be for this to happen? Well, as Richard Marks, uh, uh, on behalf of the IPA, so eloquently pointed out last year in, uh, in the paper on the screen uh, in front of us, if you can't measure and evaluate, first of all, you can't plan. And if you can't plan, you're flying blind. 
So we need to start to measure the right things and ignore the noise. Uh, and in summary, he, he basically says you know, the opportunity to connect media exposure uh, and consumer behavior is, is the measurement holy grail. Well, guess what uh, is happening now? You know, we can actually do this. So you know, as analog media starts to digitize, uh, it becomes addressable. If it's addressable, you can connect to the right data sets to make it personalizable. Um, at the same time, the game-changing ability to connect large uh, media and purchase behavior data sets creates common currencies for the first time across all channels. Uh, if representative um, connected attitudinal panels uh, from those uh, same data sets are then overlaid to what people feel and think, you then have the holy grail. You have connected what people see and hear, what they feel and think, connected passively to what they do. And it is this leap which has created the tipping point that is transforming the media industry. And it's going to go way beyond programmatic activation. Now, on the screen in front of you now is a picture of pure heresy. Um, it is a linear purchase funnel, which doesn't exist. Um, but I put it up just to make a, a simple point. Um, traditionally, media planners um, think and plan from the left of the screen uh, to the right. You know, you start, we generally start around creating um, uh, big awareness uh, and reach, and you work through the consideration, intent, activation, and then you create a dialogue and conversation with your customer over a lifetime. Um, but if we start to connect media exposure data sets with be uh, purchase behavioral data sets, we link it all together and we create a line of sight. Um, and this dissolves the line. So the line between, uh, which is formerly above the line, uh, below the line, online, offline, and even brand and retail um, uh, connections um, uh, integrate totally. Um, so what this all means is that the traditional media planner mindset has to fundamentally change. And it has to change from uh, an approach that starts from the outside looking in through these fragmented media silos to um, one that starts with the customer and treats media as part of one overall uh, CRM plan. Um, of course, this is all powered by the right technology, which is moving at a frightening pace um, and is around us uh, today. So this allows for the natural selection of channels that the consumer wishes to engage with and can already be found in. Um, so uh, welcome to the, the, the new world, the truly connected world of what I would simply call um, behavioral planning. It's, it's basically planning based on people's behavior, and I wasn't creative enough to give it another name. Um, so to help, I've attempted to put together a three-stage uh, process which um, I believe helps to navigate uh, the road ahead. And it is certainly one that we uh, practice and believe wholeheartedly in uh, at Dunhumby. So we've already discussed the, uh, the need to evolve from a siloed model of media-centric um, convenience to this depth of engagement uh, model, which puts the customer and customer thinking firmly uh, at, the, at the heart. And when you do that, when you ruthlessly put the customer at the, at the center, the language instantly changes. So you move away from this disconnected world of um, reach, of clicks, of tweets, um, to a new world uh, based on one of real behaviors. Uh, so new customers acquired, number of products sold, how many laps customers you've reactivated. They're real behaviors and they're real metrics that a CMO has to report to the board. So by first um, segmenting customer behavior and understanding where the propensity for growth uh, exists, it allows for smarter planning and a more agnostic approach to media channel uh, selection and execution. OK, so now we're in the right mindset. Um, the objective here is then to connect media exposure and purchase data at household or individual level. Now, for those of you who know Dunhumby, um, within this retail model on the screen, we are lucky enough to already access um, significant uh, loyalty and retail media data. So the first, the inner two um, circles of uh, my circle or onion, depending on how it's looking on the screen. Um, but so what we need to do is to connect our first party purchase data to the various media, media channels. 
And creating this jigsaw uh, is not easy, and it really hasn't been achievable up until now. But it's worth sticking with, because connecting it together unlocks a single customer view with the ability to first measure and evaluate, and then to plan and target across all channels, but keeping the customer firmly at the center of our thinking. Um, so let's look at a case study. So one of the many channel, pan channel partnerships we now have formed is uh, in the UK is with Sky. Um, so Sky IQ uh, provides the ability to measure, evaluate, and optimize TV campaigns. While in the future, AdSmart, um, although up for now, future for Dunhumby, will allow us the um, execution of highly relevant uh, and targeted campaigns to individual households. So what have we done? Well, the partnership connects two of the UK's largest and most powerful data sets uh, at an anonymized household level. We've taken uh, Tesco's uh, 17 million club card uh, data set and merged it with Sky's 10 million uh, data set to, to, to create a match, of which we've formed a, the output is a, a nationally, or, or, or a, not nationally, it's a representative panel of, um, uh, of Sky homes. We can make it nationally representative. Um, which is a panel of half a million people. Now, if you think that BARB, the industry measurement system, is about 5,100, this panel is 100 times more powerful than the current UK TV measurement panel with much greater forensic uh, granularity. So, the outcome is uh, powerful, uh, and uh, the insight uh, gained can drive not only efficiencies and, uh, uh, and greater relevance, um, by connecting what people uh, see and hear in their living room across all TV channels, it can actually connect it directly to their behavioural response in, in store. <coughs> so, that gives us this line of sight. We now have a line of sight of anon at anonymised household level to begin to uh, connect together, paid, owned and earned, uh, around a real customer journey. So, we know that um, somebody has been exposed to uh, uh, a TV ad, so we can see uh, what the direct result of, of that TV exposure um, is. We may also know, because it's a connected uh, um, customer view, um, which retail promotions or which retail media they've been exposed to in store or online. So we can then start to look at um, a media attribution model, which is real, which is simple, that for the first time connects together brand media and retail media in an in a easy-to-use, meaningful way with great accuracy. Um, and in some instances, uh, we also know how they've talked about a product uh, in a social space via advocacy platforms such as BuzzAgent um, uh, that we can then go and factor in too. We can also start to then just add in other channels uh, that we've made that same uh, data match with, maybe Sociomantic for online display. So you can see how this becomes a real attribution model, not based on first click or, or last click or time decay models. This is what real customers, uh, from a customer perspective, are being exposed to and, and, and behaving as a result. So, great theory so far, Adam. I bet this is going to be years before uh, you're actually doing any of this for real, uh, with meaning. Uh, well, not quite. So, um, welcome to the Dunhumby uh, Connected Brand Solar System, or Universe, or Wheel of Fortune, depending on who you ask within the business. So we're now at our final step of three, which is to connect everything that we do. Um, and this means the tools and the solutions, and not just the data. So we work with our brand and retail partners to build um, connected data ecosystems. As experts in customer science, we not only join the various data sources together, we understand how to create value from the data as well. So we build bespoke tools and connected solutions that align strategy, insight, planning, activation, um, measurement, and evaluation. So insight doesn't stay locked into disconnected pockets along that journey. Um, and I'd like to demonstrate this with a real example, with real numbers, and this is a live uh, brief with a, one of our partners at the moment. So, we call it imaginatively Brand X. Brand X, we can find five million shoppers uh, through Tesco Club Card. So they're real shoppers that uh, may be high, medium, low spenders. They might buy once a year, they might buy every week. But what we can start to do is we can start to segment those customers and work out where the propensity for growth and the business issues are going to come from for, for that brand. 
nearly a million of Brand X shoppers also shop online. So uh, within uh, Tesco.com behavior, we can start to understand their search analysis. Are they coming in through the category or through the brand? Are they, um, uh, you know, are, are they staying with us once? Uh, are they regular shoppers? Are they switching? Um, we can also then uh, serve relevant and personalized communication off-site through Sociomantic, those same shoppers. So that's do. So then think and feel. So we have a um, 100,000 plus, 100, plus panel, um, attitude and insight panel called Shopper Thoughts, um, which is an always on longitudinal view of how people um, feel and think. So there are 33,000 Brand X shoppers on our, on our panel. So we can do bespoke attitudinal ins insight into um, uh, ask them why they're behaving. So we can connect the how and the what to, to the why they're buying that brand or not buying that brand, uh, or any other question uh, we care to think about. Um, we can also connect what they're seeing to, uh, um, to brand and ad tracking. So we can start to con connect together the short and the long-term effects of brand equity uh, with short-term uh, sales effect. And we can also, in terms of needs and preferences, start to connect with 21,000 of them, which are on our advocacy platform Buzz Agent, to um, ask them to give us their feedback on new products or talk to their friends about it in, in a meaningful way. And then finally, um, there's the C in here. So we can find 66% um, of Brand X shoppers uh, across various social platforms in a connected way. So we can start to optimize social reach campaigns. Um, we've created a media consumption panel uh, so to link uh, what people are buying to their claimed media preferences and attitudes. So we can start to understand which devices they like and which um, media channels they prefer. We can also um, find 170,000 of them on the Sky IQ panel, so we can deep dive forensically into their TV behavior and how that TV behavior is driving um, purchase effect or maybe not purchase effect. Um, and we can also, in the future, um, target 2 million of them through Sky AdSmart's platform, so we can start to deliver personalized and relevant communication in a meaningful way. And all of this is, is connected up. Um, so, I mean, I guess what this ultimately means is that the, the media planning center of gravity has, has now changed. So the only uh, way to navigate an ever-increasing proliferation of media channels, uh, platforms, and fragmentation is to move away from starting with the channels and to start properly with the customer, so working inside out and not from the outside in. Complemented by enabling technology and support, Soon there will be no excuse not to know how your brand and its communication directly impacts your customers' behaviors and emotions. Um, so that's it. I mean, in summary, I would say, you know, as media continues now to connect around behavior, the opportunity for brands and planners to work towards a line of sight from the customer view out and deliver better experiences that ultimately win the trust uh, of consumers in this confusing digital world has never been greater. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam. That's fantastic. Now, we've got time for one question. One question. We must have some media planners in the audience. I can see a hand up over there. Hi. Thank you for the very interesting and insightful presentation. I have a question. Um, how do you use the data to measure the um, effectiveness of different media mix elements? So, could you repeat the last bit there? Um, so you, uh, you, you measure the behavior of your customer, and how do you use the data to measure the um, media mix efficiency and so the every element of media mix? Because usually media mix, media plan consists of different elements. Sure. So, so it's, it's how, how you use the data to, to create media, so media mix modeling, media efficiencies. So, so what we're starting to do is to connect each, each channel. We gave one example here. And it's not, it's not a perfect model, so we're building our ecosystem over time and working with more and more partners. Um, but what it allows us to do, if you take media mix modeling, is to work from the ground up. So um, whereas econometrics and market mix modeling will look at the total sales level um, and the, the different media inputs into, into that uh, sales at a, to, at, a, at a total level, uh, for total sales, what we can start to do is to segment that a lot further. Um, we have a, a partnership with, um, or we now own a company called Agent Based um, Sandtable, which is agent based modeling, and that allows us to build effectively market mix models from the ground up. So we can start to 
um, effectively build simulations of markets uh, and see how we think different media are going to affect different scenarios. And then we can step out of that and go to someone like SkyQ and actually see in a robust way whether, whether those um, models are uh, real or not and working.